Welcome to the Carnivore Revolution. I'm Serena. And I'm Jess. Before we get started, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe below. <laughs> so today we have a very special guest. Kim Jansen is with us and we're really excited. Let's start out with you kind of just sharing your journey and what got you to the carnivore diet. Oh, um, so I've actually for most of my life been interested in nutrition and I think it comes from I had this weird obsession with um, food and counting calories when I was about 12 <laughs> and I've always been addicted to sugar way before that so I figured out that if I just counted the calories that I was eating I could eat x amount of chocolate every day and I would get everything that I needed so that's where I kind of started and as you know that's maybe not the best tactic for doing this um so yeah uh I was always doing a lot of sports I became a personal trainer nutrition advisor and then I got my master's degree in nutrition because I felt like there was something missing when I was helping people with their diet advice it was like they were telling me that they fo followed the diet and they were still not I mean they might have lost a little bit of weight but they weren't getting healthier and they didn't lose as much weight as they should have according to all my calculations of how many calories they needed having the perfect ratios between everything it didn't seem to work so I figured that there's something fishy going on here unfortunately <laughs> I have to say that even the master's degree in nutrition teaches you pretty much the same thing as you learn in the magazines so uh, I didn't learn a lot there but once I have actually graduated I started doing my own research so like I can say what it did for me was that it taught me how to do my own research and I am forever grateful for that so then I got into a keto diet and I have tried carnivore many times and it doesn't quite work for me so I'm not 100% carnivore I am okay. probably more carnivore than many people who say they are carnivore <laughs> 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 Probably like 90, 95%, something like that. So I have mm -hmm. carnivore days and then I need to refuel with some sort of carbs because otherwise I get extreme headaches and migraines. And I stuck it out for three months last year and I ended up having con like constant headaches every day for six weeks mm -hmm. or actually more. And it took me over probably two months to get back to my baseline after reintroducing some carbs. So I'm not doing that again. And as you know, which is kind of what you're diving into currently, is that nutrition isn't the only aspect of being healthy, especially mental health. So do you want to talk a little bit about your current pursuits and um, what you're studying and, and doing? Yeah, so this is really interesting. So I was approached by Scott, um, the carnivore lion, you might know about him, um, and he he figured that what I'm doing because I'm actually helping people who are low carb get off of carbs so I'm helping them with the carb addiction and mm -hmm. what I'm doing is actually we're, we're rewiring the brain and he figured that I'm doing exactly what they're going to do in their project so he wanted me to come and teach and I was like I'm not sure I'm not really sure what this is so it's all kind of a little bit new to me as well but the more I learn about it the more I realize that it's exactly what I've been doing I just didn't know that it had a name and what we're talking about is they call it limbic system training or retraining um, some people might be more familiar with the term neuroplasticity training that brings more of a bell for me so I could kind of connect with that a little bit so the limbic system is it's it's actually several parts of the brain so they're all the parts of the brain that are involved in your fight or flight or freeze response so they have to do with uh, how we react to stress and it just triggers that response so it's it's an essential part of the brain and we want to have that because otherwise if we didn't have it and we were about to be hit by a car we would probably not move <laughs> we'd just be like well who cares <laughs> <laughs> so it's a good system to have but the problem with it is that the brain is quite uh, sensitive to different kind of um, injuries which can come from like, you know, blunt trauma or chemical exposure or a, just a really bad diet or lifestyle, whatever. And if you are kind of damaging this part of the brain, it can get stuck in a, um, like a constant fight or flight response. Mm. So you will 
feel like that's where the you know tired wired is coming from you will feel very uh, uptight and unable to relax and that can over time because you're releasing a lot of stress hormones these stress hormones will also activate the immune, immune system and over time you will just have chronic inflammation going on from that response which makes all the sense because if you had to run from a tiger your body's expecting you to just maybe get injured and then we need to have all the immune cells ready to just heal that and fight infection so it does make sense from an evolutionary point but it's it's very unuseful to us in this day and age when we're just being stressed by everything. I'm curious what what causes that trauma to happen in your brain that leads to all of this? Um, I mean, sometimes it's chronic infection. So your nervous system is just like getting overstimulated by the same thing. And it just thinks that this is the baseline. This is where we need to be. And it just gets stuck there. If you have like a blunt trauma, you actually hit your head, things can just get damaged. And if you can't repair it, then you're going to have some stress there as well. It can also come from things like, you know, those people who are just like being stressed about everything because that's how they've grown up and that's how they learned to react to things. Like the chronic stress and worrying about things can cause that as well to just get stuck there. So when you see that people, if you if you meet some people, they, they just can't see like the positive things in life. They probably already have some limbic system impairment, but it might also have been how they grew up and they were just looking at the world in that way and that just got them to get stuck there. So it can be all sorts of things. And obviously with um, a standard American diet, for example, there is so much inflammation from the diet that you would just trigger the system to keep doing what it's doing long term and then it doesn't really know what the baseline is anymore because we're building up these pathways to always react this way so even when if we take that away it might continue reacting that way because your brain no longer knows how to react normally so we have to consciously rebuild these pathways to make it function the way that it's supposed to function can you share a little bit of what that process is like for people so that could be many, many things. And I, <laughs> those are some of the things that um, I've been asking a lot. So what I do, what I've been doing, I can talk about that in detail if you like, but we are changing how you are thinking about things. Like we, it, it has to do with awareness. You need to be aware of what's going on in your head because we have a lot of thoughts. So that could be thoughts around your self-view, uh, how you talk to yourself, what you're thinking about other people, what you're thinking about yourself, what you're thinking about the situation in the world, all of that. We can always change that thinking into more positive thinking. And I want to be a little bit cautious with this because a lot of people are like, well, positive thinking isn't working for me <laughs> and it's just bullshit. And I get that, um, what they're saying, because it's like with positive affirmations, if someone says, oh, you should just look yourself in the mirror and tell yourself how much you love yourself every day. I'm like, well, that's bullshit because I don't believe that. But if you do that and you take it stepwise, so going from like, I hate myself to maybe I'm just, I'm a person and I can actually be, I, I don't look too bad <laughs> to actually sometimes I look quite nice. So you can just take it stepwise. But as long as you can believe it, you can emotionally connect with that. And that's when you start rewiring those thoughts that you have. So we're just changing like negative thought patterns, I suppose. Mm -hmm. But you can do this in so many ways. You can do visualizations. Um, you can do journaling. I like journaling because you can write down a lot of things and then you can read it back and just kind of disconnect from it emotionally. It's much easier to see and change things when you do things that way. Other things that you could do is like... <laughs> meditations, uh, deep breathing, all of these kind of biohacks, just avoiding blue light in the evening because that is stressing your nervous, nervous system, follow the circadian rhythm, uh, cold thermogenesis, probably hot, <laughs> hot uh, thermogenesis as well. It's just a different way. Um, vagus nerve stimulation. There's so many things that you could do. And I'm thinking things like yoga might also work 
but I want to caution people a little bit because when you do these things, I know for me, because I'm not a yoga person. So if I were to do yoga, I would probably be in my head all the time thinking about everything I had to do during the day. And I think that would probably not work very well. So when you do anything, you need to do it with intention and really think about the connection between your mind and your body while you're doing it. And then you will probably get the results. So who is your ideal client that you would want to work with in that has this kind of these symptoms? What if someone's watching and says, well, I just have normal, normal thoughts of sometimes I have good days, sometimes I have bad days. Uh, this doesn't apply to me. I don't need to retrain my brain. Uh, so who do you look for or what type of person sh- would this benefit is my question. I think anyone who has unexplained chronic illness would benefit a lot from this. So, you know, a lot of people come to carnivore, for example, because they have autoimmune conditions or they have other conditions that they think that um, a carnivore diet will help with. Because let's face it, it's the best elimination diet on earth. (laughs) It has everything and it removes a lot of stuff that people react to. And yet not everyone is actually getting healed from doing it. So if you are one of those people who are not healed from doing that, then this is probably where you want to look rather than going to some other nutritional therapy or, you know, supplement protocols or parasite cleanses or whatever. Because if you have a limbic system impairment, none of that is going to help because you're in such a stress response that even when you remove all of these things, you might feel a little bit of relief but you're not getting the whole way there it's just because your nervous system is reacting to everything so you can't even a lot of people they can't even take supplements because they'd react to the supplements or if they start let's say a parasite cleanse uh, you're going to eat a lot of stuff that just you know uh, kills off the parasites you're probably going to react really badly to that because your body is going to perceive that as a threat So a lot of people in that camp, they can't even try other things. So if you're one of those people, then this is definitely what you need to do. And how long until somebody starts to see results with this kind of, you know, therapy and trying to change their thought process? What is your experience with that about when do people start to feel better? Oh, that is so individual. I think, I mean, it can happen for some people probably very quickly in like three weeks two, three weeks, they start seeing some changes. But I think depending on how much uh, impairment you have in the limbic system, the time, I mean, it could be several years probably before you're fully healed because it's something that you might have been doing for 50 years. So we can't expect it to, like, yeah, it's going to be solved in two, three weeks. It's just something that you need to commit to and keep practicing Mm -hmm. every day. But Mm -hmm. As long as you see some progress, you know that you're on the right track. And once you start healing and you kind of dampen that uh, immune response and the stress response, then you can probably start doing the other protocols that might not have worked in the past that you're now receptive to. So how long is a piece of string? I can't like tell you because I think that in this case, it can actually take a very long time before you're fully healed. Does this work for everyone? Because like, if someone is taking a couple years, do they need to start looking somewhere else or just keep going at it? Because that's something in the carnivore community where it's like if someone isn't seeing results with carnivore, there's some people who say you're not doing it right or try harder, carnivore harder. So uh, with this, is, is there it will it work for everyone or do they need to start looking somewhere else after a couple of years? I think that everyone probably has some, you know, some benefit from doing this kind of work because to be honest, in in this society, that there's no one that is like immune to stress. We're all gonna have some stress response and probably a little bit of an over response. But I'll revert uh, I'll <laughs> reserve judgment. There might be one or two people in the world that are just like completely healthy and they don't have anything. But I would say that ev- everyone probably will benefit from it. But if we talk just talking about the people that are really sick or really ill. I think they will. Like, I think it, it, everyone would benefit from it. But if you do, don't see anything, let's say after two months of practicing this every day, then I think you need to 
look at what you're actually doing like is the intention really there because if you're doing it but you're not really I mean you're just going through the motions it's probably not going to be effective mm. so I, I would recommend that you just like check in with whomever you're training with that you are doing it in the in the most efficient way I don't want to say the right way because I don't think there's necessarily a right way for um, like a cookie cut this approach I think you just need to find your right way of doing it and connecting but yeah I would rather look at the process than just saying that this is not working now I'm going to try something else because if it has to do with your nervous system then where what else are you going to do and um, maybe you know psychedelic drugs will help you I don't know <laughs> but it isn't a lot that you can do you need to get that nervous system under control before you can do all the other things and so many people are going to come to this the same way they come to carnivore saying, I've done everything I can possibly do. I might as well try this. I mean, honestly, that's the kind yeah, of yeah. people that are going to end up coming for this kind of a uh, treatment, um, just like people who start the carnivore diet because they've tried literally everything else and nothing works for them. So I think it's amazing. Retraining our brain is something that we should probably all be doing. I mean, if you go out in the world and you interact with people. Maybe maybe not half, but let's say 30% of people, they're going to be very reactive and very emotional and they're going to be pissed off about things. And they're just going to, you know, everyone who has like any sort of over emotional reaction to little things probably need to do some rewiring. It will just help them <laughs> calm the F down. <laughs> and the internet doesn't help with that because that is when you open any social media, that's exactly what you're going to get. Mm -hmm. exactly <laughs> is that part is that part of the training too to advise people to kind of take a break from from the social from social media I, I think so I'm not going to be involved in that part because we are all doing different things so the part that I will be involved in personally will be to like uh, form you know uh, effective uh, affirmations how to change the way that you're thinking all of you know the the brain the brain thinking stuff <laughs> whereas I know that Annabelle who's there she's more into the, the biohacking and staying off social media she's very strict for herself on what she's doing etc so I think she will be teaching that part so I'm not really exactly sure about what she will be teaching but there will be like different classes every week so I'm not going to teach the same thing every week but it's probably going to be like the same theme every week because this is what I'm good at so I'm going to stick with what I'm good at and what I enjoy doing not saying that I can't teach you to just stay off of social media but I think that is a big thing it's just if if you're watching a lot of news or social media and you're getting upset about it, it's not going to help your immune system or your nervous system to calm down. It's just going to make it even worse. So there needs to be some sort of guidelines if you have that problem. Well, can you talk more about the structure of the program then? Uh, with Because you said you mentioned Annabelle. She has something going on with um, biohacking and things like that. So if someone's interested in working with you, what would it look like if they uh, hire you guys? Well, it's, I would like to say, it, it's like a membership. It's almost like limbic system training Netflix. There will be several classes per week. So you just pick the classes that you're interested in and you attend those classes and then you can get some help while you're there working with a coach that is coaching you currently. And there will be, they have some plans. I don't, don't know about all the plans, but there will be some material that you can use as well that you can use offline um, accountability they will get some body up groups if you want to body up with someone have some accountability partners etc so they, they're setting all of that up and it, it's supposed to be live on the first of March so there's still a few weeks out but I'm I'm kind of interested in seeing where that goes as well because I think it would be really good or well, that's what I'm hoping anyway <laughs> that's very exciting it yeah. sounds really cool. Uh, and it's, I think, because you mentioned earlier that you, e even in a, with a master's degree in nutrition, that you were still taught things that aren't necessarily accurate. And I think a lot of people are starting to realize that they can't just trust everything they're being told and they have to start researching on their own. So I think things like this are going to only get more and more popular and things like the carnivore diet mm. that are a little um, 
less mainstream or uh, counterculture, uh, I think they're going to just continue to get more and more popular as people realize that what they're being told isn't working. Yeah, absolutely. I think you're right. And fingers crossed that it's going to happen sooner rather than later. Yeah. Are you getting good response back um, already? Are you like, is there buzz around it and people interested or how's it, how's it looking so far? Yeah, I think so. Uh, I haven't talked about it a lot because uh, until just a few days ago, I wasn't really sure whether we would start on the first or not. But uh, I've had some people in my Facebook group, they have been uh, saying that they're interested in joining. So I think it would be a really good supplement to everything else that people are doing, like nutritionally, etc. Just to make sure that they they're kind of attacking their health from all possible angles and it's definitely not going to hurt anyone. So how can people find you? If people want to get a hold of you, where can they go? So if they want to get hold of me, they can probably just email me at pim at pimjohnson.com or go to my YouTube channel, which is Pim Johnson. <laughs> or if they want to go and check out the limbic system training, they go to limbic-training.com. You can can sign up i think but i would probably hold that off because i think you guys are gonna have some discount codes so, but they can go and check it out for now and then they can sign up when when you guys are ready yeah and we'll uh, they will sure get a month for free by the cool. way that's awesome yeah so we'll be sure to link everything in the description and make sure everyone knows exactly where to find you if they want to work with you because i think this is a great a great thing and i agree with you i think everyone could benefit at least in some way from from trying it absolutely yeah like, awesome. now let's talk about your awesome hair no <laughs> yeah. yeah let's talk about your crazy partner how about that <laughs> oh jesus <laughs> or ted Do let's I get talk about ted for a little while no. <laughs> yeah oh i should have brought him he that oh, apron is just amazing. So cute. <laughs> like you guys are amazing. I just saw it and I was like, oh my God, that's so spot on. That's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> like so cute. I'm so impressed. So cute. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you next time here on the Carnival Revolution. Bye.